So, really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode on Glunch the Bestower, yes, that is its name. Make sure you check that episode out to find out why this commander can make your opponents so salty. Or, at least I should say, in the version of the deck that I'm going to build around it. But don't leave for Glunch just yet. I still can't get used to that name. <laughs> Stay tuned to this episode where I'm going to be talking about a commander that works with Myriad. That's right, that spicy mechanic is back. And this commander is absolutely gross, and I love it. So with all that said, let's jump into it. So first up, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. So we have Duke Elder Raven God. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to do that voice the entire time, but you know, anytime I see the word Duke, that kind of voice pops into my head. Anyways, Duke Alder is a 5-5 human noble soldier that costs 4 red white. Alder has, at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and myriad until end of turn. And myriad is a mechanic that we have seen before, but not very often at all, and it means whenever it attacks for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of that creature that's tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control exile the tokens at end of combat. So yeah, myriad is a very powerful mechanic in a multiplayer format that, you know, in, in a non-multiplayer format it does absolutely nothing but yeah in multiplayer it's basically hey you're attacking that one player with your creature now you get to attack all the other players of that creature too now obviously at a base level you can say okay i've got this creature in play that's got a decent amount of power and toughness all right i'm attacking this one player with it but i'm also going to be attacking the other players with it too to dish out extra damage but again, that's just a base level for this commander. I mean, this commander has a lot more potential, and there's some really disgusting things that you can do with it. Now, keep in mind, unfortunately, with the way that Myriad works and is worded, you aren't going to be getting any attack triggers from those creatures that are coming in because they're already coming to play tapped and attacking. So, I mean, fortunate or unfortunate, no Annihilator with this commander, at least, you know, no Myriad Annihilator. That being said, of course, there are still plenty of things that you can use and abuse with this effect. And one thing is pretty straightforward. I mean, Enter the Battlefield triggers can be incredible with this commander. If you've got a creature with a fantastic ETB, you get two extra copies of it essentially attacking other players, and you get its ETB two more times. Now, of course, on top of that, this can also benefit you with LTBs, though let's be clear here. Those tokens do exile at the end of combat. So when I say LTB, I do mean leave the battlefield, not when this creature dies, when it leaves the battlefield. That is specifically how it would have to be worded unless you've got another way to get rid of that creature, maybe like a sacrifice outlet. And we'll talk about some of those things here in a bit. But yeah, just be careful with that. Do not count on LTBs unless you've got ways to take advantage of them or unless they are true LTBs. But yeah, I can see many players building around this commander just taking advantage of all the ETBs over and over and over again and getting a ton of value out of this. Now, before we jump to the cards I want to bring up that work very well with this commander, one thing really quick. When a new commander like this is spoiled, sometimes cards go up in price that work really well with it. So in the description below, you'll find a link to the list of cards I'm talking about on this episode, just in case you want to pick up some cards sooner rather than later. And now with that said, let's jump into the cards. First up, and I'm just basically going to use this card as an example for a lot of other cards in the exact same category, but Relentless Assault and other cards like it that give you additional combats are going to be incredible with this commander. Just really quick, so we're on the same page. One, this assault is a source that says, untap all creatures that attack this turn after this main phase, the additional combat phase, fall additional main phase. Basically, again, additional combat, untap your creatures, etc., etc., etc. Regardless, again, the way that this commander is worded at the beginning of combat on your turn, that's when you get your trigger. So obviously, the play can go like this. You say, have one creature in play that's really powerful and has got maybe a powerful ETB. You give it haste and myriad until end of turn. You attack, you get those triggers. Cool. All right, let's take an extra combat now with Relentless Assault. So we untap all of those attacking creatures and we get to attack again, which means we get another combat trigger. 
So we give haste and myriad to another one of our creatures. Now we have two creatures with myriad that can attack and get more and more and more value. Again, swinging at all of our opponents, getting ETBs, whatever they have, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, additional combat spells like Relentless Assault and of course there are plenty of other ways to give additional combats as well are incredible with this commander because those myriads just keep adding more and more and more, you know, with more creatures getting more and more creature tokens out. Now, when it comes to ETBs in these colors, I mean, one of the very first ones that came to my mind was Sun Titan, which actually can benefit us in multiple ways. It's a 6-6 Vigilant Giant that has, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So again, keep in mind that we do not get that attack trigger with those Myriad tokens, but we do get the ETB trigger, and of course, you know, we're going to get the attack trigger with the original Sun Titan as well. So by attacking with Myriad on this, we've got a hasty Vigilant Giant that then, you know, gives us two more 6-6. Giants are going to be smacking our opponents, and we get three triggers, getting three things back from our graveyard with mana value three or less. And speaking of bringing things back from our graveyard, well, how about Karmic Guide? Karmic Guide has, when it enters the battlefield, return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we get this in play, we get a creature back to play, and then we, well, give it haste, give it myriad, and swing, and get two more creatures back from our graveyard. Yeah, that, that is a massive play for just five mana with this commander. And also, of course, outside of getting things back from our graveyard, well, we've got something that can actually get things into our graveyard and provide us card advantage with Combustible Gear Hulk. It's a 6-6 with first strike, so a heavy hitter, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't, you mill three cards, then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player because the total mana value of those cards. Basically, give me the cards or I'm going to hurt you a lot. And yeah, when you myriad with this, you're getting that twice. So a simple attack with your Gear Hulk, again assuming three opponents, can grant you six cards, which is just absolutely incredible. Or, you know, a lot of punishing damage if the opponent wants to take the risk. Next up, a creature that's not going to do a lot of damage in combat, but is absolutely absurd, is Dockside Extortionist. It's a 1-2, and when it enters the battlefield, you create X treasure tokens for X the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. So as if getting this ETB just once wasn't bad enough for your opponents, I mean, you can easily get a ton of treasures with this. Now, when you decide to go to combat and hastily swing with this with Myriad, well, you're going to get that trigger two more times. Yeah, there's a reason why this card is like $80 or something, and I, I believe the rules committee may or may not have mentioned that it might be on the radar for a ban. So, we'll see. Regardless, of course, we've got plenty of other ways to utilize these Myriad creatures, and we can actually utilize them to take a lot of things out with things like Angel of the Ruins, Luminate Primordial, and even Silverclad Ferocidons. Angel of Ruins has, when it enters the battlefield, exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. So, you know, this 5-7 flyer already can just get through a good amount of damage when we Myriad with it on each opponent. And of course, on top of that, we get rid of what on that Myriad? Four things, essentially, again, assuming three opponents. And speaking of getting rid of things, well, Illuminate Primordial is a 4-7 Vigilant Avatar that has, when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, exile to one target creature that player controls, and that player gains life equal to its power. This can get rid of a ton of problematic things on the board. Again, you know, just with the original, that's three. With the two Myriad copies, that's another six creatures gone. This can get rid of nine creatures, essentially, on its own. Well, on its own. In combination with our commander, you know what I mean. And then one that can be even deadlier, though, is Silverclad Frostedons, an 8-5 dinosaur with Enrage that has, whenever it's dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. So if our opponents don't block, they're going to take a ton of damage, and if they do block, well, they better block with just one thing, and even if they do, we're getting rid of one thing for each opponent. And if they block all three of these, you know, that's going to be, what, nine permanents in total being sacrificed? Three for each opponent? So I don't know if they're going to be doing that, but we'll see. Maybe someone really doesn't want to take damage. But when it comes to taking advantage of all these ETBs, something that can really help us out, though, is something like Lumbering Battlement. It's a 4-5 Vigilant Beast that has, when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-token creatures you control until it leaves the battlefield. So this can get really fun with Myriad, because let's say, you know, we have this come into play and exile all of our other creatures that have, you know, really powerful ETBs. We go to combat, and then we attack with this, and then we get two token copies of it, and um, with one of those token copies, we exile Lumbering Battlement, the original. So then, Lumbering Battlement leaves play, all those creatures that it exiled come back and we get all their ETBs. This can definitely lead to some very spicy and very potent plays. And speaking of spicy and potent, well, we've got to talk about cards like Impact Tremors, Warstorm Surge, and Where Ancients Tread. 
Impact Tremors says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. So regardless of whatever creature we have with that myriad, again, if we've got, say again, three opponents, that is going to be two creatures coming into play for a total of six damage across all of our opponents. And of course, if we say have something like a mere battle sphere, you know, that is going to be making tokens when it comes into play and we myriad that, well, that can be an absurd amount of damage. Speaking of which, Warstorm Surge can also take advantage of our creatures coming into play with that myriad with, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control deals damage equal to its power to any target. This can dish out an absurd amount of damage. Again, assume that we have a six power creature. We myriad with it. We get 12 total power coming into play that we can either, you know, do six to one thing, six to another, or just 12. And of course, Ranch and Shred is somewhat similar. It says, whenever a creature with power five or greater enters the battlefield under control, you may have Ranch and Shred deal five damage to target creature or player. Yeah, many of our, you know, big ETBs are going to be coming from big creatures, so dish out that five damage. And speaking of dishing out damage, let's now talk about a card that I kind of referenced earlier, at least the type of card where you want to be able to sacrifice creatures. Well, Goblin Bombardment is a fantastic sacrifice outlet. It says sacrifice a creature, Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to any target. Again, keep in mind that those Myriad tokens are going to exile at the end of combat, so we might as well get some extra use out of them by sacrificing them for some damage. So that's at least, you know, just an additional two damage as long as we've got three opponents. That being said, again, like I mentioned, this can really help us with LTBs, and why I'm saying LTBs this time, I mean specifically LTBs that are death triggers. So, for example, some Simi Lycrum can be a great card in this deck. It has, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. So, even just with this ETB for this one creature, again, for four mana, we get into play, we ramp, and then we, you know, give it haste and myriad and attack with it, and we get two more copies of it, so we ramp two more times. Now, of course, on top of that, though, some Simi Lycrum has, when it dies, you may draw a card. Now again, unfortunately, those Myriad tokens just exile at the end of combat, so we don't get that death trigger. But again, if we've gotten something like Goblin Bombardment, we can force that death trigger. So before those tokens are about to exile, we just sacrifice them, ping some things, and then we get to draw cards. Now, speaking of death triggers, though, ones that you actually can count on without sacrifice outlets, though, are ones that come with legendary creatures because, well, if you Myriad them they're going to go away. So for example, at Sushi, the Blazing Sky is a 4-4 legendary dragon spirit that has flying and trample, and when it dies, choose one. Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards or create three treasure tokens. So we give it haste and myriad, we attack and we get our two token copies of it, both of which are gonna come into play and be like, oh no, the legend rule, I'm gone. So we sacrifice those tokens and we get their death triggers, each of them. So two death triggers, we can pick whatever we want. Again, if we need some additional, you know, cards we can get access to with that first one, or we, you know, we, we could just create what, six treasure tokens? Yeah, let's go with that. And then there's Alva Dawn Sky, which has, when it dies, choose one. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put any number of non-land cards from a total mana value, four or less among them on the battlefield. Put the rest of your library in a random order, or put two plus one counters on each permanent you control, let's say creature or a vehicle. So if you've got a decent amount of small non-land permanents in your deck, sure, choose that first option, maybe even twice, or, you know, just make your creatures absolutely massive by getting a ton of counters on them. Or how about one of these Dragon Spirits that actually doesn't give you an option, but it's a fantastic one with Yosai the Morningstar. Yeah, this is where things get extremely gross with this commander. It has, when it dies, target player skips their next untap step, tap up to five target permanents that player controls. So yeah, that works very well with Myriad. Just get this into play, give it haste to Myriad, attack it, two token copies of it, and um, those token copies are going to be sacrificed, and you say, okay... Uh, you don't get to untap, let's tap those five things down, and you don't get to untap, let's tap those five things down as well. Most likely, they're lands. So, because of this, essentially, you can just probably lock two players out of the game if you really, really want to. Yeah, this is a disgusting mirrored combination that you might want to think twice before using. Now, of course, Duke Holder can be a fantastic commander, a very spicy commander, but if you're looking to use it in the 99 of another deck, well, make sure you're considering it for Ishin to Heavens as one. Ishin has, if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers additional time. Now, while Duke Older itself doesn't have an attack trigger, what it does have is the ability to give Myriad, which is an attack trigger. So basically, give a creature haste to Myriad, attack one player, and for the other two players, you're going to get two token copies of that creature attacking them. Things can get really out of hand when you're set up correctly with this. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Duke Elder Ravenguard. 
<clears throat> okay, I promise I'll stop doing that, mostly because the episode's coming to an end. Anyways, yeah, there are some really cool and spicy and gross things that you can do with this commander. I mean, Myriad's just a really awesome mechanic for multiplayer. You can really take advantage of creatures hitting hard, but of course, you can even more so take advantage of giant ETBs and even take advantage of LTBs if you do it correctly. Again, either they sacrifice outlet for a death trigger for certain creatures, or, you know, some creatures just have an LTB. Or again, with legendary creatures that have a death trigger that just you automatically get essentially when that legendary rule applies. And of course, keep in mind that if you are interested in building around this commander, you might want to consider checking out the link in the description that has these cards because, well, sometimes card prices do go up sooner rather than later, so you might want to pick up cards sooner rather than later. Regardless, this is a really exciting commander, and I'm sure we're going to get even more exciting commanders and even more exciting spoilers coming up, so make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more quick takes. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.